there will be a broadband tsunami. Still, in the midst of these certain changes, there are two public policy areas where the outcome will, be, will determine how widely that tsunami watches over things. And even at this, actually 13 minutes from now, the Knight Commission on the Information Needs of Communities in a Democracy will be unveiling the fruits of a year-long effort to understand what's going on with information policies and communities needs and will be calling for universal broadband adoption in this country. It is still an open and very disputed element of, of American policy that a, a significant commission is arguing uh, on one side. I think there's no contradiction whatsoever between saying a government should be open accountable for what it does and still has to respect the privacy of the personal information that it collects about its citizens. That's one of the big challenges uh, we face in the information age. Not letting the desire to ensure that accountability for decision makers, which is critical for democratic institutions, become an excuse to reveal the private facts of individuals, which really don't relate to, to the um, activities of government. I remember my first email address, my first screen name, my first MySpace, my fourth MySpace. <laughs> so it's been with us the whole time. But I think what I'm starting to understand, maybe it's because I'm maturing, maybe it's because uh, I, I guess it must be because I'm maturing, is that as the Internet evolves and matures into a more mature future, my generation that's grown up with it also must evolve and mature. It may not be something you expect to hear from a young person. It, and, that, and that's because it's been ingrained in our heads since day one that the Internet is free. We are confronting um, some very uh, fundamental uh, choices about, um, for example, authentication on the Internet. For example, if you want to secure the routing architecture of the Internet, it would be very useful to know something about every IP address from which traffic may come uh, and to be able to exclude very precisely uh, the places that you don't want to get packets from and the places you do want to get packets from on the basis of malware or virus attacks or whatever else it might be. However, um, if one of the great features of the Internet is that uh, it is uh, facilitating a profound flourishing of direct citizen-to-citizen -citizen speech in places that don't have much of a tradition of that or have a tradition of centralized control uh, over information, um, then uh, you would alter that architecture and build in that authentication at great peril. One thing that I think is not arguable is that regardless of where that innovation may go, what that uncertainty may yield, is that we have to address trust and confidence in the medium, the security aspect. This will have implications for architecture, for authentication, for policy, certainly. Uh, but if the medium is, as I think we probably all believe, a great, the world's greatest medium for innovation and connectivity with other human beings. If it's going to be the, the greatest platform for innovation, it must be a platform for participation. So more people feel trust and confidence they connect yields more innovation. Yeah.